I have now been at the cottage for nigh on two months, and I must say that it suits me here mightily. I have largely been occupying myself with going through and filing my old lecture notes, as well as by taking extended walks through the surrounding countryside. Today, Samuel visited me to bring back my trusted volume of ancient poetry. We took our supper together, one of Miss Pritchard's fine pork pies, and sat around the fire, conversing for a long time. My guest told me a great deal about the new Don who has taken up my post. He seems to be an odd little fellow with the most curious habits. Samuel also asked me how I was intending to occupy myself, now that the responsibilities of university life have been lifted from me. This question brought up the excitement regarding my recent discovery again, and so I told him all about the matter. The locked room, the key that I found under the gnarled oak behind the cottage, the old wooden case. Who would have dared guess when I decided to settle here that my predecessor had left me with such treasure, with such beauty? He must have collected all these things chiefly for their outward beauty or possibly for their pecuniary value. I know little about such things. I could never bring myself to care quite enough. I am content as long as there is bread on my plate, wine in my glass, life in my body. There is no trace of his having compiled information about the personal histories of all these objects, some of which would certainly seem to be rather old. I have decided to do precisely that. To fill these things with the life and soul they must once have possessed, and that they surely deserve to possess again. I will dedicate myself to their histories, and I will try, through them, to relive the love and pain and desire connected with each one of them. I intend to fill them, as I am sure they will fill me. I wish to become their history.